Are you into the self-loathing? Well, not loathing you yourself personally. You're impeccably non-racist and LGBTQ friendly. But let's face it, everyone else is awful, including all your ancestors and your entire civilizational inheritance. Well, if you dig the societal self-loathing, and who doesn't, the National Gallery is the place for you. They're currently working with the University College London Legacies of British Slave Ownership Project to figure out who among their artists and subjects and donors are, quote, related to slavery. And they've just added some pretty big names to the list, including Her Late Majesty Queen Victoria, Gainsborough, and Wordsworth. Wordsworth, you may vaguely remember as the once widely read poet who, quote, wandered lonely as a cloud. Well, he's not lonely now because he's joined the mass ranks of British slavers, a vast digital cloud comprising more or less every historical figure you've ever heard of until the day before yesterday. Wordsworth is in what The Telegraph calls, quote, the hall of shame because get this, for two years in his 20s, he and his sister Dorothy lived in a property owned by John Pinney, who had a sugar plantation on Nevis in the uh, British West Indies. Uh, are you one of the uh, many contemporary poets who likes to unwind after a hard day wrestling with the spondees and dactyls by watching Nigel Farage of an evening? Are you entirely sure, therefore, that your landlord isn't possibly a transphobe? Did you make the mistake of using a flat hunting agency and unbeknownst to you, your bedsit is owned by an Islamophobic turf? Good luck explaining that to posterity. Wordsworth wrote a sonnet hymning the victory of the great abolitionist Thomas Clarkson and a fat lot of good it's done him. What's up with Gainsborough? Well, he was one of the greatest portrait painters Britain has ever produced, and so he painted portraits of British people. He painted the Byam family, who owned a plantation in Antigua. On the other hand, he also painted Ignatius Sancho. Take a, take a look at this. Uh, Ignatius Sancho was born on a slave ship, but taken to London, where he became a writer and composer and the first black man to vote in a United Kingdom election in 1774. That's the one where Lord North trounced the Whigs. And this is the only picture we have of Ignatius Sancho, the first black man ever to vote in a British election. We wouldn't otherwise know what he looked like. But he's painted by the greatest portraitist of his day. Isn't that a fantastic thing? Doesn't it make you proud to be British? Ah, nuts to that, and to hell with Gainsborough. Let's shove him in the hall of shame with everyone else. Cromwell instructed his own portraitist to paint him warts and all. Today we paint only the warts. This is the narcissism of the moment. We have weighed the entirety of human history against us and found them all wanting. What was uh, William Blake's position on transgender bathrooms? Can we get a research project going on that? I hear a lot since my return to UK telly about balance, balance. So in the interests of balance, let me posit an alternative view of history, that if it were not for the British Empire, slavery would still exist throughout large parts of the world today. It does in pockets, but it's not generally, widely, publicly accepted as a fact of life. And no institution did more to abolish slavery than the Royal Navy. God bless them, every one of them.